good afternoon, uh, everybody. Thank you for uh, the invitation to be here with you. Uh, we are uh, going to discuss the issue of uh, long-acting uh, antipsychotics, uh, which is um, a very uh, a very old um, development, but still it's underutilized uh, in everyday clinical practice. Now, this is my uh, conflict of interest. I have received uh, several grants and the support by the pharma industry. Now, the basics concerning schizophrenia is that it's a devastating disorder. It starts with uh, the primordial phase and uh, uh, progresses uh, through uh, relapses, uh, eventually to a state where disability predominates and negative symptoms are those who uh, are uh, dominant in the clinical picture. And of course, we have uh, some uh, uh, brain loss and uh, brain atrophy with uh, ventricle enlargement and also uh, loss of uh, the neuropil. Uh, what, what drives our clinical uh, instinct and our clinical uh, observation is this loss of uh, functioning and this devastating disability and we miss uh, something which is much more relevant in medical terms, that's survival. People with schizophrenia die far more often than uh, normal people, than healthy people. They have uh, something like 15 to 20 years of uh, loss of life expectancy. Uh, and this loss of life expectancy, this uh, mortality rate is far higher in the younger group in comparison to uh, older groups. This is a big issue for schizophrenia, often disregarded and neglected by the average clinician. Uh, the recovery rate is rather disappointing. Uh, Meta-analysis suggests that the recovery rate is something like 13 percent. Uh, there is a large uh, heterogeneity in the literature. Some uh, papers suggest close to 20%, other papers as low as 6%, depends on the chronicity of patients, depends on the uh, date and the year of the, of the study. Older studies tend to, uh, uh, to report higher uh, remission rates, probably because the uh, definition of schizophrenia was different. Uh, but anyway, the recovery rate is something like 13 to 15% no better, and it does not seem to have been um, improved with the introduction of antipsychotics over the years. And this is very, very disappointing, very pessimistic. The biggest problem seems to be treatment adherence. And this is what the Katie study mostly found. The Katie study is a well-known uh, pragmatic study conducted in the U.S., and what most people who present this study and were not part of it uh, suggested that this is uh, how uh, net medication act when you don't utilize psychosocial intervention. And this is a, a big mistake. The KT researchers utilized every psychosocial mean, every psychosocial tool they had uh, in their hands, like family uh, intervention, like CBT, whatever they could to enhance adherence and to enhance people functioning. And what was the outcome? The outcome was that something like three quarters of patients dropped out of treatment within one and a half year. And the most pessimistic, the most dark side of this discontinuation was that 30 percent was patient decision without any rational explanation. It's just that patients decided to drop out treatment. And this is the biggest problem we face as it seems that adherence and especially partial adherence, partial adherence is more, is more devious than full uh, lack of adherence because it's much more difficult to trace and to deal with. So partial adherence increases with time and climbs up to 75% within two years. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that most of our patients are not adequately adherent to treatment. 
And it is very difficult to assess adherence because patients tend to over-report their good behavior. Uh, if we count pills, we will see that only 10% are fully adherent. And when uh, the patient self-report how they deal with their medication, it seems that almost all of them are very, very good patients. Two-thirds are fully adherent. This is a great difference, 50% or more, 60% almost, in, in real and in self-reported medication adherence. And this is one of the biggest problems we face with antipsychotic treatment and one of the biggest, uh, most important uh, factors which determine the outcome in schizophrenia. And what happens when there is partial adherence or intermittent treatment? Well, it seems that almost 94%, almost all patients, this is an over over um, phrasing, but anyway, it seems that more than 90% of patients will eventually relapse under inadequate treatment within a year or two, more than 90%. There are some patients, approximately 10% or less, who might do well no matter what uh, the treatment they receive or they do not receive is, but 90% will relapse. And relapsing, as I said, leads to worse outcome, worse disability, and higher mortality rates. And here comes the second empirical study from the UK, the second pragmatic study, the CATLAS, the Cost Utility and Latest Antipsychotic Drug in Schizophrenia Study, which suggested that first generation antipsychotics do not differ from uh, second uh, generation that's psychotic. But when you see very, very carefully the results, you can see that from all treatment, from all treatments, if you compare baseline and after one year, what happened was that when you, they used depot injectable agents, this was the only group with increased numbers after one year. And they used only first generation depot injectables. This was the group that made the difference. Essentially, the conclusions was that uh, first generations do not differ from second, but that was an, uh, essentially because the study was underpowered. And if the PO injectables were excluded, then second generation medication would be far better than first generation. So the depot formulation, the long-acting formulation, was the determining factor of this study. The formulation has a major impact on dropout rate. With oral treatment, we have 46% or more. With depot, with long-acting, it fell to 17%. This is, this is a huge difference, a 30% difference. In, in adherence. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So these, these compounds, the long-acting compounds, could, could eventually have uh, a huge impact on adherence. Now, there are some advantages and some disadvantages with the use of these agents. The, the advantages overall is better control, better controlling of, uh, of uh, the dosage, better controlling of uh, blood levels, better controlling of the patient's attitude and patient behavior and uh, um, his laboratory testing and all these. Uh, and the disadvantages are that patients might feel more stigmatized, they, they need to come more often to the um, to the clinical setting, uh, they have uh, pain at the ejection site. The most uh, important problem is that for some, for some uh, of these long-acting inject injectables, you need for some months uh, to concomitantly use oral medication. But at any case, these are advantages and disadvantages you can you can utilize and you can balance. In, in a way, you can have 
the best outcome with the less adverse consequences. This is a short table with the available first and second generation long-acting injectables in multiple dosage formulations uh, for the uh, maintenance do dosage. Some of them require uh, prolonged oral treatment and some do not. Some could have uh, acute adverse consequences like uh, uh, olanzapine uh, uh, long-acting injection. Some others are very, very safe. There is a methodological warning when we read the literature concerning uh, long-acting antipsychotics. If, if we look at randomized control trials, okay. in, in these trials, the patients who participate tend to be very, very good patients, very good boys and girls. Uh, they, they tend to uh, collaborate with, uh, uh, with the therapist, so we have a ceiling effect of adherence, more or less a ceiling effect of adherence. While on the other hand, when we have pragmatic studies, mm -hmm. when we have cohort studies, then it seems that the worst end, the most refractory patients mm -hmm. are put into these long-acting components. So, uh, uh, in principle, you might not uh, expect to find any beneficial effect of long-acting antipsychotics when looking at uh, RCTs because there is a ceiling effect of adherence and you might not find in cohort studies because there is uh, a, 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 a big difference in uh, refractoriness and illness severity. Now, let's see what, uh, what happens. Now, with randomized controlled trials, we have significantly fewer uh, relapse rates. Relapse rate is something like, uh, uh, sorry, something like 30% lower in patients under long-acting uh, compounds. And when we go to cohort studies, there is something close to 20% lower hospitalization rate with these compounds. And the difference seems to be mainly because of second generation long-acting uh, injectables. Uh, if uh, uh, there is one study with uh, a natural ways, a natural wide database, a cohort study with uh, close to 30,000 patients, <coughs> which showed a 22% lower rehospitalization with LAI. This is a huge effect, taking into consideration that, for example, uh, statins have a, an approximately 10%, uh, produce an approximately 10% reduction in the in events um, in five years of uh, treatment. And antidepressants may be uh, 10 to 15 percent difference from placebo. So 22 percent in comparison to, um, to oral medication is it's a huge difference. For uh, those patients who are newly diagnosed, who are younger patients in their first episodes, the difference is even higher. It's uh, 30 to 35 percent uh, lower hospitalizations. And again, second generation agents seem seems to make the difference and not first generation. Now, the question is, the big question is survival. Do antipsychotics improve survival? Do long-acting antipsychotics improve survival? It seems that uh, within uh, five to six years, in this cohort study, within uh, five to six years of observation, 8% of patients died, and those who were not under antipsychotics had a double rate of, uh, a double mortality rate of approximately 15%. Wow. Uh, antipsychotics reduced the mortality rate for about 30%, which is, again, a huge reduction in mortality. And long-acting antipsychotics were significantly better in this reduction of mortality rates 
in comparison to oral antipsychotics. This is a summary of cohort studies with uh, long-acting antipsychotics and survival, almost all of them from Scandinavia countries and Canada, they all consistently report improved survival rates or reduced mortality rates, depends on how do you, you would like to call this effect, with long-acting antipsychotics and in general with antipsychotic treatment. The next question is how about the cost, because these injections are costly, they, they cost uh, many times the cost of oral medication, especially uh, since the patents have expired and we have generics uh, with oral medication. Now, uh, there are three main uh, studies. One from Spain suggested that the hospitalization costs fall so, so much with long-acting uh, injectables that it covers the increased cost of medication and overall there is a 22% reduction in the total cost. Uh, all, all such studies suggest a reduction in the overall cost. For in Sweden it is almost 8%, not 20%, but still 8% it's, 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 it's a huge reduction in cost because the hospitalization rate decreases while the cost of medication increases, but the overall cost is reduced. And in Germany, we have, again, a 21% reduction in total cost, even when the day hospital cost and other costs are uh, taken into consideration. Again, hospitalization cost drops, medication rises, but the overall cost falls. So, in summary, Schizophrenia is still a devastating disease. It is characterized by high disability rates and we should start having in mind that the biggest problem is high mortality rates with schizophrenia. 15 to 20 years of life are lost in these patients and many suggest that atypical antipsychotics are responsible for this uh, high mortality rate. This is not true. Uh, treatment with antipsychotics it is significantly better in terms of mortality in comparison to no treatment at all. So antipsychotics as an overall effect have a protective, uh, a beneficial effect on mortality rates. However, only 13% of patients eventually recover. And this could be because, in, at least partially because of problematic adherence, which could be uh, manageable if we use long-acting injectables. Of course, with all their advantages and disadvantages, patients may not be very eager to receive this, uh, this formulation. Um, relatives and families might be more, uh, more agreeable. Overall, long-acting antipsychotics improve relapse rates, improve hospitaliza uh, hospitalization rates, improve mortality rates in comparison to oral antipsychotics, and the total cost seems also to be lower in comparison to oral compounds. Thank you very much for your attention.